Okay, YouTube, I just want to give you guys a little update. I haven't got very far. I've been taking my time trying to figure it all out. I see a few problems just starting out with my trunk hinge set up. The trunk hinge is actually very close to the inner tub. You can see that this bracket right here is actually welded to the inner tub and the trunk brace. There's not a whole lot of room in there. Now, the trunk actually slides over these hinges. So it's not like it just bolts to the underneath of the trunk or anything. It has channels that slide over these hinges and it bolts through the side. So I'm not saying it would be impossible to relocate these trunk brackets with the hinge and everything, but I'm gonna have to give it a little thought before I just start cutting stuff out. But as you can see, I got my old trusty grinder, wire wheel, and just wire wheeled all of the seam sealer and all of that junk out of there. And I actually uncovered a lot more rust than I first thought I had. It seems that that seam sealer just soaks up moisture. As you can see here, this whole area was covered in seam sealer. And I can imagine this rust goes all the way underneath this seam here. So once I get it jacked up and the tires off of it, I can look from the underneath. Because I know that so much of this inner structure is gonna get cut out because my wheel tub is actually moving over so I'm gonna clear a lot of this rust out but I have some rust up in there rust in a few other spots <clears throat> I still haven't decided whether or not I'm gonna actually delete this spare tire tub just make the trunk all the way flat I'm still deciding on it I took the back window out I felt like it gave me a lot more room uh, to get to these spot welds in the rear deck and then the inside. Uh, I didn't have piano wire, I didn't have access to piano wire or anything like that. So I actually found this wire here at Lowe's. This is picture wire. Zoom in. Number two picture wire and it kind of worked I mean I was able to get around the sides get down the sides of the window pretty good uh, once it got into the corners it was catching on this metal here and it kept breaking so what I actually did was I took my turbo heater and I sat that right inside of the car and I turned it on for about 10 minutes and just got it hot. And once I got it real hot, I found me a piece of thin metal. If I can find it real quick, my old lady is gonna kill me. This was actually for a curtain rod that actually just held the curtain rod up and screwed in the drywall. I don't know what it was doing out here in the garage, but it became a sacrificial tool and I just used it. Basically, once I got the window real hot, I just stuck this in behind it as easy as I could and I slid it all the way around the window and just worked it slow and steady. And I mean, it took me four or five times and the same thing on the bottom. I, I was able to get it up under there and just, you know, move it along. And the bottom wasn't too bad once I got the bottom loose and I had like I said I had already cut the sides out with the wire pretty much all the way down on each side and I got that bottom worked out I was able to kind of pry it up and get the window out and I've I worked at a junkyard for a few years so I've seen a lot of windows shatter 
course, they have real nice tools and all of that stuff to take them out, but I've still seen them shatter, so I was real careful. Once I got the bottom and the sides all worked out, I was able to use that same tool and kind of just apply a little pressure while I was pulling the window up and just, I got the top to come loose. Also, when I took the window out, I found some surface rust on the inside of this window track. Some of it, if you can see right here, it's actually, I cleaned all of this up with the wire wheel, but I got a few spots in here that's gonna need a little touch up. Some of it I think I can get away with. It's not horrible, horrible, but I live in Ohio, so, you know, I'm not planning on driving this car out in the wind. I mean, the snow and all of that, occasional rain, but for the most part, it's gonna just be a cruiser. Now on the inside, here's my panel. This panel here, sorry I'm moving so fast. This was my support. Support went up in there like that and it was actually spot welded here, all the way down, up in here. And I couldn't, I, I got these spot welds here, but this panel, if you can see, I cut it here along this line. This panel actually is spot welded. I don't know if you guys can see. It's spot welded right there to this inside sail panel. And it actually goes under the trunk in this area here. So I couldn't really get in there to get it. So I just took the cutoff wheel and I cut this line out. Once I had all of these spot welds drilled out and it was all loose, I just cut this out, cut this little section here and pulled it out. That way I have access to the whole <clears throat> wheel tub. Now I started down here at the bottom. This, this was all clean, but once I got to getting all the rest of the body filler or the seam sealer out, stuff goes everywhere. But actually this panel is loose here. It's actually loose from this structure. But there's quite a bit of spot welds all the way around this whole panel. And right now I'm deciding on whether or not I want to actually take the time to go around this whole thing and drill out every one of these spot welds and try to pull this tub off. Or do I just want to take my cutoff wheel and just ride this line right here, this seam, and just cut it off as nice as I can and actually leave this piece of metal here. Because the positive side to that is this gives me a little more thickness, a little more metal to weld to once I figure out my new tub. I don't really see any negatives to it. Like I said, I already, I already drilled these spot welds out. And let me show you guys, I actually, bought a spot weld cutter off of the Mac tool truck. Here it is, it's a little bitty thing. Zoom in, spot weld cutter. And it was neat. It actually, it worked for a while, let me show you. It's nothing really to it. I guess these little drill bits are sold separate. If you can see them, they're actually double sided drill bits. They're real small and they're sharp as shit. And here's the spot weld cutter that Max sells. And I mean, this isn't the first job I've used it on, so when I first got it, it worked pretty good, I guess. Uh, I would drill a pilot hole with the drill bits and the Mac guy said if you drill the pilot hole, it makes these bits last a lot longer. But in this case, I think it's it's ran its course. So. What I found, it actually works great. Went to Lowe's. Lowe's sells these DeWalt drill bits. Now this DeWalt drill bit right here, it's a 5 16 bit, but it actually has a, I don't know if you can really see, I got one in the drill. Let me grab the drill and show you right here. <clears throat> if you can see it, zoom in, it actually has like a pilot hole bit on it clean it off for you a little bit 
there you go you can see it has a pilot hole bit and it actually worked really well <clears throat> excuse me for drilling the spot welds out and if you controlled it enough and you you know you went slow and rocked it around side to side you could actually drill the spot weld out without drilling like here I got a little excited and drilled all the way through both panels <clears throat> but on the inside I was actually if you can see here you know I was actually able to drill the spot welds out without going clean through both panels so that's the way you're supposed to do it from my understanding all of the old school body guys that I know you know here's a better look too I went through a few of them but most of them I was able to just get them off just the one panel and it makes it a lot easier to weld everything shut uh, you can fill these holes you know if that happens you know even if you booger it up a little bit you can always grind it down I mean I weld for a living but I still have my days where some of my welds don't look the best that's for sure haven't started on the other side I started on it but I stopped for a minute I actually that light is pretty bright I got this this panel loose and I got it loose from this inner tub but I'm just trying to do one side at a time that way I might learn something on this side that I can apply to the other side instead of just going gung-ho and cutting them all out at one time and I'm gonna try to stick to the plan and just do one side at least I'll get it all cut out and get my plan then once I have a good idea what I need to do and everything, then I can go ahead and cut my other side out. But I just wanted to give you guys an update and fill you in. There's a lot of good guys on the G-Body group I'm in on Facebook with a lot of pointers and a lot of tips. And, you know, it helps a lot. Helps a lot when you get advice from other people who's done it before because this is my first time and you know I'm just learning as I go like I said you see the garage I I don't have no fancy tools or nothing I got a MIG welder stick welder I got a big air compressor I ain't got a 220 plug ran to my garage yet but I'm working on it got good insulation I did do that before the winter hit it's cold here in Ohio but that's an update. I'll keep you guys updated. It's around 8 o'clock at night. It's the day before Christmas Eve, so I'll probably work a little longer on it. Maybe try to get that whole tub out. And I'll probably call it a night. Thanks for watching.